I want to read portions of some scriptures. Uh, and I want to take from a very long story uh, and, and bring it in just a few scriptures. In 1 Kings chapter 19. I want to deal with just really a certain part of, of this long story. 1 Kings chapter 19. Verse 1 says, and, ah and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not uh, your life as the life of one of them by this time, tomorrow. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to, Judah, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, it is enough. O oh Lord, take away my life, or take my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay under the juniper tree, uh, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked, uh, baked on the coals, and a jar or cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. Amen. And I want to talk to you this morning for a few minutes uh, from a subject of the enemy's threat. The enemy's threat. I said earlier that this is part of a, uh, a very long story uh, in the life of Elijah. And, and so, uh, and Elijah had done some great things in the name of the Lord and for the name of the Lord. But it's important to know uh, for all of us, and I know that you've experienced this, that the biggest threats, the greatest attack in your life always seems to come just after your greatest victory. Just after what seems to be your greatest success. Just after you've had your best accomplishment, and that's when it always seems to to come. Things seem to come barreling down. You you barely had time to enjoy it. You barely had time to smile about it, even to tell the stories of your success and your accomplishment. And it seems like while you were yet on the mountain top, all of a sudden you found yourself down in the valley low. Well, yeah. It, it it seems like the bottom just fell out of your life. Yeah. Uh, you were up. Now you're down. You hear these words of threat. It seems like something just caved in in your life and it changed your whole perspective on how you saw things. The impact of the threat left you with no answer. It left you with no direction. It left you with no hope. It left you with no, no understanding. It, it left you with no light. It, it, it left you which seems like nothing except depression and seclusion. Because that's what happens. Because depression all of a sudden takes over your life. Uh, and, 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 and before you know it, you're running. As a result of that, you're running trying to find a place of seclusion. You're running because now you're at a state of saying, all of a sudden this is happening in my life and I really cannot and do not want to deal with it. And, and sometimes we began to sing the commercial or say the words of the commercial, uh, the old commercial, Cow God, take me away. Amen. Yeah, if I want to get away. Some of y'all remember the, the, the old song, uh, I'm leaving on a jet plane, yeah. and I don't know when I'm coming back again. Yeah. I just, I got to get away. Yeah. You know, I, I have to get away because the pressure of the threat has exposed some things 
in me and about me. As much as I've done, it seems like that which I've accomplished now has crumbled in my eyes to be nothing because the threat has brought me to a place of, of, of not just humility, but of fear. Uh, Elijah had, had done some great things for God. He prayed that the rain would stop, and it stopped. He, he prayed three and a half years later that the rain would start again, and it started again. Yeah, he, 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 he stood uh, with a few of, of, of his followers. He, he stood, and he, he came against the, the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. He, 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 he prayed so that God could be seen as mighty. He, he told him, pour down your water and, 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 and we'll find out whose God is real. Yes. And, and, and when the God of Baal did not respond, he called on the Lord Jehovah. And, and, yes. and, and, and God responded by lapping up the water that was around the trench. Yes, he did. What an awesome and awesome thing. And, and then he took the responsibility as he should have and he, and he, and he slayed all the Baal's prophets. He did. Yeah, he, he defeated all of them on Mount Carmel. And, and so imagine now how he's feeling within of this great victory. Not just the victory of Mount Carmel, but even the victory of being able to, to say, stop rain and start again rain. Uh -huh. and, and now, here he is with all of these accolades behind him. Now, now he's at a point to where, out of all this greatness and all of this power of God that flowed through me, surely the hearts of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel and, and all of Israel will now be turned back towards God. Because I know I've done such a great job. I've accomplished my mission. I've accomplished what I was sent here to do. The truth is your success doesn't always make everyone happy. Your, your success does not always make everyone happy. Even, even if it's for their good. Yeah, They don't always see it that way. They just see the fact that you did something that really upset them. All right. Jezebel put the word out that, that she will kill Elijah in about 24 hours. She sent the word out that, that, that you may as well know I'm coming to get you. Because what, what you've done was you messed up all the things I've worked for. And that was truly to turn the hearts of people towards Baal and not towards Jehovah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and Elijah, Elijah heard these words, and, and Elijah, the great man of God, Elijah, the great warrior for God, Elijah, the great runner for God, Elijah, the most courageous man now is given in to fear. Yes. Now finds himself on the run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as, for, as far as he was concerned, the bottom had fallen out of his life. Mm -hmm. The great victory now brings the great attack. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You see, the threat, the threat of his taking his life was real. Mm -hmm. And like Elijah, we embrace the pressure of threat sometimes, mm -hmm. and we get discouraged, just like Elijah. Yeah. Yes, and it gets easy to respond by running and hiding in seclusion. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. And if it, because the threat, what it does, it threatens our peace. Mm -hmm. It threatens our joy. It threatens yeah. our stability. Yeah. It threatens yeah. our work. Yeah. It, it, it threatens our livelihood. Yeah. It, it, it threatens our family. It threatens our very being. It threatens our our life. You're already on. And, 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 and it seems like it comes so fast yeah. after the victory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it rises up quickly and, and, and unexpected because we're expecting to be happy. We're expecting to be joyous. We're expecting to, to be able to relax and enjoy what we've experienced and what we've done and the work we've done and, and now all of a sudden here comes the threat that's slapping us right in the face. Uh, yeah. yeah. The threat came so fast it made Elijah back up. Well. Yeah. And that's what happens with a lot of us. So much so that the only thing he could think to do was to run away. Yeah. And to save his life. Yeah. But. From the hand of Jezebel. Right. But God. The only thing he could think to do was to run away to save his life from the hands of Jezebel. The only thing he could think to do was to run away to save his life from the hands 
of Jezebel. Yes. Maybe you didn't read yes. what I read. Yes. Yeah, we said it. That is real. But after running some 80 miles away. Don't do no good. You, do you hear what I said? After running some 80 miles yeah. away. He now sits under a, a broom tree or the, the juniper tree. Uh -huh. and, and, and now he, he, he sits there and when he takes a breath in, he now says to God, I've had enough. Oh, mm. right. uh, wait, no, somebody, somebody, maybe you you missed you missed that. He he tells God, I done had enough. Yeah. Ah! yeah. After all the victories that 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 he's given in the name of the Lord, he tells God, I done had enough. Right. right. And after a one threat that came from Jezebel, he says, I've had enough. Maybe, maybe y'all still hadn't gotten that yet. See, see, but we're not that much different from Elijah. After all God has used us to do it, and here comes one threat from the enemy, and we want to quit and give up and tell God, I've had enough. Maybe, maybe I'm not talking to folks who ever experienced it. Maybe I can talk to this side. Maybe, maybe you and I are the only ones who can identify with Elijah, who, right. who after God has blessed us over and over again and, and shown his power through us over and over again, and after he's yeah. called us and told us we'd be a prophet to the nation, that we would be his minister, and now all of a sudden we got one threat. Right. Yeah. Right. And we told God, I done had enough of this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but oh wait, 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 I heard a few more amens that time. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I believe I got a witness in the house who's, who's told God before, God, I'm through with this. Yeah. I done had enough of them folk. I, yeah. I, 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 I'm through with this job. I done had enough of these folk. Yeah. I'm through with that church. I done had enough of them folk. I, yeah. I, I, I'm through with this household. I'm through with that woman. I'm through with that. I done had enough. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm tired of these kids too. Yeah. I, I'm so caught up in my depression. I've run to a point of seclusion. I'm sick and tired. I've had enough. Yeah, I've had. I've had enough. I've had enough. Matter of fact, God, let me throw it out there and say this. Here I am. Yes, Lord. And I've given myself away to you. So you can use me. But right now, God, I done had enough. I've had enough of Baal. I've had enough of the prophets of Baal. I've had enough of Ahab. And I done had enough of Jezebel. And if I can stand and say all of this when I'm talking to you, I done had enough of you too. Because you're the one who keeps sending me. You're the one who keeps putting me in a position. And now here I am threatened with my life. The only thing I could do was take off and... <laughs> yeah, obviously, this ain't working for me, God. Oh, wait, 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 maybe I thought. Obviously, this is not working for me. Here I am doing your work, and this is what I get. Isn't it amazing, y'all, that this is the same man who said, Clouds, stop raining, and it stopped? Right. The same man who prayed again and said, Clouds, release the rain, and it began to rain. Yes. The same man who could command and speak to God, and fire from heaven would come down yeah. and dry up the trench. Yeah. <laughs> now, the same man, the same man with all his praying power, yeah. is now praying to God no. and saying, I haven't had enough. Yeah. Oh, but God. Listen, the threat of someone taking his life said to him, Lord, Take my life. Yeah. Oh my. yeah. The threat of someone saying to him, I'm going to take your life. Yeah. Made him run and tell God, God, I've had enough. Yeah. Take my life. Y'all yeah. didn't see that description, did yeah. he, he, he said, Lord, I done had enough. Yeah. Take me now, Lord. Yeah. Come on. Oh, see, y'all, okay. Yeah. That's what he said. Lord, I done had enough. I'm through. I'm done. Yeah. Maybe y'all still didn't catch that. Lord, I'm tired of all of this that I'm going through. I'm tired of what you've been putting me through. I'm tired of this stuff. Because this threat was a major threat. He, he, maybe you don't miss that. I know every threat don't mean some threats you shrug off. Some threats you
you brush up, but there are some major threats yeah. that come up in your life right. that make you begin to question who you are, yeah. makes you question what you've done, yeah. and it begins to make you question your relationship with God. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it, makes, it makes you question, it makes you question. And now here he is using the same method that he used to bring deliverance, the same method of prayer he's using to say, take my life. Yeah. He went from her taking his life to asking God, take my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Made, made a lot of sense, didn't it? Yeah. See, what he didn't realize was that his life was not his own. Yeah. It was to God who he belonged. Not at all. Not at all. He didn't understand that what he really meant by saying, I give myself away yeah. so you can use me. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he didn't understand that the fact is that, 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 that we, we look at what he's going through and we look at what his threats were and what his state of mind was because of the threats. And, and now we see Elijah like a lot of us sitting under the, the broom tree, mm -hmm. sitting under the juniper tree in our life. And we're there in seclusion and we're there in a state of depression and we're there saying, God, I've had enough. God, I'm quitting. God, I'm done with all of this. The problem with that is we go and we tell God that we're done and we throw in the towel. Yes. God sits and looks at us and says, I don't care. And he throws the towel right back at us. Yes, he does. Oh, I know y'all don't believe me. I thought you saw that in the scripture book where he threw the towel to God. And then God threw it back in him. You, you didn't see that in the scripture? Where he threw the towel to God? When he said, Lord, take me now, Lord. I've had enough, take me now. He was throwing the towel back to God. I like this because look how God ministered back to him. Look, look how God threw the towel back to him. Look, look. He, he didn't, he, God didn't come back and preach a sermon to him. God did not go and give him a bunch of encouraging words. Now, Elijah, you know, you can do this thing. Now, Elijah, I, I know what you've been through. Now, Elijah, calm down. Look, 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 you're going too far, Elijah. Stop. Wait a minute, Elijah, stop. Think about it. He didn't go rational and reason with Elijah, but yet he ministered to him. He, he threw the towel back. How did he throw the towel back to him? He, he threw the towel back to him by simply ministering to him, and he ministered to him by simply saying, go ahead, get some rest. Y'all didn't see that in the script, but he the towel back. Go ahead on. After he did all of that, he did all of that, Elijah said, <laughs> the Lord ministered to him and came back and said, I'm going to minister to you, Elijah. I'm going to minister to you, so get some rest. That's all. Yeah. I'm going to minister to you, Elijah. Wake you up in here. Get something to eat and drink. Yes. Right. Yes, see, you see, sometimes we, we fail to realize that we expect God to, to operate one way. Yeah. Right. And God is actually operating another way. Yeah. And, and, and so well, sometimes we only see the threat in our life. God, God sees much further than what we see. And God's understanding is way beyond our understanding. And so God didn't have time to mix a bunch of words with him at that time. God says, I know exactly what it is you need. Yes. You need some rest, yeah. and you need a little something, something to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, ah, because the bottom line is, you're looking at what your past was, yeah. but God is still looking at your future. Yeah. I wish I had somebody who thought that. Yeah. While you're running from your past, yeah. God is trying to guide you and prepare you for your future. Yeah. That's why he said, this journey is too long for you, too much for you. You can't handle a journey. You're concerned about what happened with Jezebel. I'm trying to get you ready for your next move. Oh, I wish I had somebody who understand that. All I'm trying to say to you is, God is not through with you yet. I don't care what the threat was in your life. God ain't done with you yet. I don't care what you've been through. God says he ain't finished with you yet. God is saying, just take some rest. Be quiet. Wake up. Get you something to eat. Go back to sleep. Because I need your body refreshed for the next you allowed your mind to mess you up. God has said, I need your body to be refreshed. You see, that's scripture. God already knew what the next mission was. Yeah, right. And he didn't need Elijah going back and forth complaining about things. What he needed Elijah was go to sleep. Yeah. 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 Get some rest. Yeah. Rest for a little yeah. while. And then, and, then, and then get you something, something to eat. Yeah. That's all. That's all he needed. So, 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 so like Elijah, <laughs> we need to understand that God Yes. Let me say it again, that God provides. Yes. It doesn't always come with the encouraging word. Yeah. But God yet still provides. Yeah. Hallelujah. God knows more. He sees 
more. He understands more. Hallelujah. And the threat that happened in your life did not catch God by surprise. Let me say it again. The threat that happened in your life, it did not catch God by surprise. And I'm one of those who believe that he knows the number of the hairs on your head. Even when you're bald-headed, Smith. You need to know that he knows what's going on on the inside of your head. Oh, I wish I had a witness right there. It doesn't matter what you got on top of your head. Whether it's real or synthetic. Hallelujah, or it appears to be nothing. God still knows exactly what's going on on the inside of your head. He knows exactly what you're going through. And he knows what your struggle might be. And can I tell you that all those things on the outside don't matter to God because God is looking on the inside. The reason God chose you in the first place to shut down the rain. The reason he chose you in the first place to open up the rain. The reason he allowed you to call from heaven and fire to come down is because God already knew what you were made of. That's why God ain't tripping out because of your threat. That's why God is not panicking because of a threat in your life. God ain't worried about the threat in your life. God is concerned about the next step in your life. What am I saying here? Quit letting the enemy's threat break you down. Quit letting the enemy's threat shut you down. Quit letting the threat of the enemy keep you from being what God has called you to be. God Almighty called you to be. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to know that God ain't surprised by any of this. He knows exactly what what you're going through. And he's not phased by it. At all. So as much crying as we do. As much whining as we do. And as much running away that we might do. You cannot run away from God. Hallelujah. You can't run from God. If I take to the wings of the morning. Oh Lord, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, Lord, you are still right there. You can't get away from God. Hallelujah, because he is an all-knowing God. And he is an omnipresent God. That means he's everywhere at the same time. You can't get away from him. So while you are like Elijah declaring that it's all over, hallelujah, while you're saying no more, while you're saying, take me now, Lord, while you're saying, God, I, 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 I'm done with all of this, God is saying back to you in his own way, saying, I'm not done with you yet. There's still more things for you to do. I still have more victories for you to achieve. I still have more success for you to accomplish. I still have more time for you to raise your hand in victory. Have I got a witness in the house today? Who knows that God says, I still got more for you. Hallelujah. So you may as well get settled in your mind. And you may as well sell it in your spirit. Ask God to just strengthen your body and let him move home because we need to understand that God's got this. So look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, God's got this. I know the threat is looming. And I know it seems to be coming at you fast. But God's got this. Come on, tell somebody, God's got this. Don't let the enemy drive you out. Don't let the enemy drive you away. And don't let the enemy throw, make you throw in the towel. We need to know that God has us. In other words, he has our back. Now, the God, he promised never to leave us nor to forsake us. He promised that he will be there until the very end of of the earth. He promised a good God in his word that he will be with us. He will protect us. He will cover us. He will stand for us. He will stand with us. He will fight for us. He will fight with us. Have I got a witness in the house? He will intervene for us. And he will make a way for us. Somebody ought to shout right there. Because you know the only reason you didn't lose your mind. The only reason you didn't give up because you knew God was standing up. Good God of mine. You know if it had not been for the law who was on your side, you know you would have messed up a long time ago. You would have gave up a long time ago. And you would have told God, I quit. Yeah, I have a witness in the house today. Hallelujah. I heard the psalmist say, I would have fainted if I had not seen and tasted the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to know that God is still good. And God is still on your side. Last thing I like to say, Psalm 121 says something like this. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From which comes my help? He said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. So when the threat is coming your way, lift up your eyes. Not to the hills, but you're looking towards the hills. Because the God you serve ain't in the hills. The God you serve is above the hills. He's the one who made heaven and earth. He's the one who made the cattle of a thousand hills. The cattle are hills and the hills are hills. And he ain't residing in the hills, good God Almighty. He's residing on high, fighting for good God Almighty. Somebody grab hold of me. Yeah, he, he, my help, my help coming from the Lord. The Lord who's made heaven and earth. He says he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. 
hand of such and I strike you by death for the moon by night. If the sun can't whoop you, if the moon can't whoop you, if the elephants can't whoop you, then the threat of your Jezebel can't whoop you. The threat of your Ahab can't whoop you. God already knows where you're at. He knows the assignment. He was going to give you the assignment. He knows exactly who you're dealing with and what you're dealing with. God is not about to allow your enemy to get the best of you. I don't care how much they threaten to take your life. Quit whining about the threat of the enemy. 